If there's any one thing that I'm disturbed about, it is how quickly those of us who are outwardly seem to be doing all right can jump on a man who is obviously burned out. Such was the case of that of a great preacher. I called his church and they said, he doesn't pastor here anymore. I said, where does he pastor? He doesn't even preach anymore. I said, where does he live? He doesn't even live here anymore. I said, well, tell me about it. And she said, well, he committed a sin. And in our church, when a pastor commits a sin, you have to get rid of him. I asked, would you do me a favor? Where can I find your former pastor? She said, I would not know, but I think there's a man in town who might know. I finally got his number and he was in another state. And I called him and he said, Ed, how did you find me? I said, there will be a United Airlines ticket waiting on you Friday evening. I want you to be on that plane and I'll pick you up at the airport. He said, no, Ed, you don't understand. I'm no longer a preacher. I said, I didn't even mention that. I said, there's an airline ticket at United Airlines already paid for, prepaid, and I'll meet you at the airport. I said, I, he said, I lay brick now. I just go to the church and I sit up in the balcony and nobody knows me. And I said, you still didn't hear what I said. There's an airline ticket. United. You come on up, Ramon. I'm going to need you. It's paid for. He said, well, Ed, if I come, it'll really only be for talk. And I said, well, that's all I'm asking. And he said, I'll talk to my wife and see. He called back and he said, I, I, I just really can't make it. Maybe some other time. And I said, there's a ticket. United Airlines. <laughs> he said, I said, by the way, I remind you that I'm older than you are. And in Texas, we are taught to obey your elders. There's a ticket at United Airlines. And so he came. And when I picked him up, I said, let's just don't talk now. Let's just ride. And when we got to the office, he said, I just can't hold it anymore. And, and he began to cry. And, and, and he cried. And, 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 and I cried. And, and we cried. And, and I told the secretary not to bother us. And he, and he cried and he cried. And I took him on to the hotel, and on Saturday morning I said, do you want to ride around and see what the Lord's doing? And I drove him around, and he said, I feel so much better. And I said, let's talk. By the way, if you're ready, I would like for you to preach in the morning. And he said, but Ed, I've explained to you that I did not. Uh, let me get this right. He said, Ed, I've explained to you what I did, and I've explained to you that I'm no longer in the ministry. And I said, but, but we are different denominations. We're Baptists. Baptists don't believe in nothing like that. We believe that Jesus paid it all, and, and he's cast all of our sins from him. And if, if you would like to preach in another preacher's pulpit, I, I would like for you to preach in mine. And he said, Ed, I... I don't think I can make it. So we wrestled all the way up to 11.30 while the choir was singing. And I said, in another half hour, I'm going to present you. And he preached with power. He preached to the glory of God and sinners repented and people came back. And when he got through preaching, he fell into my arms and he said, I can feel something, James, that I haven't felt in a year. I said, it's been there all along. You just needed to shake it up a little bit. He moved to Los Angeles and he stayed with us and worked with us. And today, if any of you are burned out to need a testimony, and thank God for testimonies like that, see me privately and let me tell you about somebody who can tell you he restored my soul. I would like to introduce the title of this message as simply one word, and that in the form of a question. Who? Look at somebody and say, who? Look at somebody else and say, who? Now lift your hands up to the Lord and shout, who? No, 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 do it, do it like you mean it. Lift your hands up to the Lord as if you're tired and burned out and you got kids that are acting 
and crazy and you got more money than you got bills and you're struggling in your flesh and seem like the more you try to do right, the more you do wrong. Like it's 12 o'clock midnight and nobody won't answer the phone. Lift up your hands and shout to the Lord, Ho! Now give God a hand of praise. Is there someone, I was looking for my towel, who can restore my soul? In Romans 7, 24, Paul cries, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Notice that the expression that Paul uses here is not, whatever shall I do, but who can help me? Who can save me? Who can put my broken pieces back together again? Who can restore my soul? In other words, there's got to be somebody who can do the job because I've already demonstrated to myself that it cannot be me. Amen. Paul reveals his utter helplessness, his total inability to do anything about his own situation when he cries out, Who? Notice also that this is not the cry of some hapless young saint facing his first test of spiritual warfare. This is not some novice, some young buck immediately after having found out that he is not equal to the task that he's attempted to undertake. This is not a little boy trying to play a man's game. No, no, no. This is not some wannabe preacher who suddenly discovered that he's bitten off more than he can chew. This is Paul, the apostle of grace, the great preacher, teacher, writer, prophet, and theologian, and church builder who has been sent apostolos by almighty God himself to declare among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches the, 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 to proclaim the mystery of the gospel to communicate the great message of salvation through Christ for all of mankind yes. Paul who is Saul had come face to face with Jesus Christ on the Damascus road and the proud Pharisee became the humble servant of God who only wanted to know Lord what wilt thou have me to do it was Paul it was Paul the same Paul who said where sin abounded grace did much more abound Paul who under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost laid out the great themes of justification by faith and sanctification of the spirit the unity of believers the, the nature of the Christian's warfare Paul knew his stuff Paul of all people should have known what to do Paul had no business crying out like that Paul was not the greatest of theologians but Paul was filled with renewed by empowered with the spirit of God Paul should have had it together of all, of all people Paul should have known that a, a preacher a real Holy Ghost filled preacher you know not one of these fellas that they have out here today who make mistakes and, and, and who sometimes need uh, other preachers to encourage them once in a while but a, a real preacher can take anything Amen. Real preacher can, can take a beating and keep on smiling. A, a real preacher can, he, he never gets tired. A, a real preacher can stand up to all types of abuse. A, a real preacher is like a Timex watch. Isn't that what they tell us? A, a real preacher can take a licking and keep on ticking. But yet Paul cries out in the midst of dealing with the fact the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and that in spite of the fact that as he writes in Colossians we are complete in him that is Christ yes. which is the head of all principality and power Paul 
Paul says, now I will, as Samson did, and then, and then before he lost it all, or not, this will I do as the, the wealthy yet foolish man in Luke 12 and 38 did. But Paul cries out, who is there someone who can restore my soul? In order to find the answer to this question, we now look to David. We get back to Paul and to his desperate cry in Romans 7, but let us look to somebody who really knew what it was like to me to be put back together. David was the king. David was in a position that he didn't need to ask anybody for anything. David was looking good. David was living good. David was driving good. David had it going on. And yet here he is in Psalm 91 crying, Restore unto me. My God. Or Psalm 51, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. What this is telling me is that even a king can fall apart. Right. Even a king can mess it up. Even a king can need to be restored. Yeah. And if you live long enough, you'll soon find out that trouble does not discriminate. That's right. Trouble does not differentiate. Trouble does not care about your rank. Trouble does not care about your title. Trouble does not care about your position or your status. Trouble does not care, it, but it comes to everybody. And so and so and so, just as the man in the gutter needs to be restored, the king in the palace needs the same thing. The executive needs it, just like the janitor who cleans his office needs it. The businessman who drinks his martini at the business lunch, he needs it, just like Ned the Wino needs to be restored. Everybody, no matter who you are, at one time or another, is going to need to be restored. Amen. I say again, it does not matter who you are or what your position in life may be. All of us, sooner or later, will find ourselves crying out like David did, like Paul did. Who can restore my soul? And I'm almost done. The thing that I like about David is that David, even though he was the one that asked the question, he already knew the answer. And that's because David knew how to pray. Uh, David knew how to spend time with God. David was crazy sometimes, but he knew how to pray. David was lustful and greedy and covetous and murderous, but David knew how to pray. Uh, David knew how and when to cry out to God. And, and see, there's a whole lot of us that need to learn from David's example. We need to learn how to pray. For the Bible tells us that men ought to always pray. Always means even when you're in need of being restored. Yeah. Always means even when you've fallen apart. Yeah. Always means even when you messed up. Yeah. Not just when things are going good. Many of us, because we don't understand the power of God's forgiveness, yeah. we don't pray because we are afraid. We've made a mess of our lives and we've been rejected by so many people that we think God is going to reject us too. But God in his word tells us that just because of the relationship that we have with him through Christ, even though we've messed it up, even though we've fallen apart, even though we've torn our lives to smithereens, just because we're his children, we can come boldly. I say boldly. children and we can come in at time we need to for I heard the Bible say over in Hebrews the fourth chapter let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need some of us only pray when things are going right some of 
us only want to get with God We're on top of the mountain high. Even some of our religious training high, It'll tell us high, That it's only right to go before God high, When your hands are clean That it's only right to worship high, When you've been shaved all day You'll even have you done high. We teach each other high, That we can only go before God high, And God will smile at us only doing good things, but that's not what the Bible tells me. My Bible tells me that the throne of God is a throne of grace. It's a place where I can obtain mercy. Mercy because you slipped. Mercy because you tripped. But I come to tell you that you might not get mercy from people. You might not on your job, you might not get mercy even from yourself, but my God, he's a merciful God, did the songwriter say, great is your mercy, not just toward the pastor, but great is your mercy, see there's a reason that Donnie McClinton said towards me, towards me, towards me, towards me, that's why the song say, I know it was the blood for me, for me. But the devil got some of us convinced that God ain't got nothing for you. He say, yeah, that forgiveness stuff, that's for everybody else. Yeah, that promotion stuff, that's for everybody else. Yeah, 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 that getting married, that's for everybody else. But I heard Donnie McClurkin say, great is your mercy. Not just toward the white man, not just toward the black man, but great is your mercy towards me. Say yeah, say yeah. David knew who to go to. David knew he couldn't go to people and expect to be restored. David knew what was in man. David knew that people were king. David knew that people will rejoice when your head is bowed low. But you know. They'll smile today and they'll frown tomorrow. People will divorce you. They'll hire you today. They'll fire you next week. People will call you on the phone. They'll tell you that the relationship is over and won't even tell you why. But when my heart is overwhelmed, lift me up to the rock that's hiding out. In other words, when I need to be restored, Somebody who's better than me to do the restoring. I need somebody who's greater than me to do the restoring. I need somebody who's faster than me to do the restoring. How do I know that God is fast? I heard the old folks used to say, You may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Was he late, Lazarus? Was he late, Lazarus? Now, from your point of view, if I was to ask Lazarus, Lazarus would say, from your point of view, Jesus was late. But from my point of view, he was right on time. See, because you was outside the tomb. But I was inside the tomb. And when I'm inside the tomb, when death is all around me,
after a while it got to be annoying. <laughs> but it says something like something's missing. Something's missing, girl. Something's missing. You remember that song? By the boppers. Yeah, that used to be my song. But see what you don't understand is that the age of 1920, something really was missing. And that song was a cry for restoration. But as I began to walk the path of life, I began to discover when I opened up this book. Take off the filth. Sit 
down and rest. And then there's those of us that are running like Jonah did. Ah, you looking good today and you smiling, but you down in the belly of a way of a fish. Because you would not do, God said, go this way, and you went that way. You notice that every aspect of what was spoken today points to the need for restoration. I need to be restored. I need to be put back together. Oh, God, minister to your people today. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that even that I'm here to pray this prayer because it speaks of your restorative power. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It'll never lose its power. And God, by that blood, I ask you, restore somebody's mind. Restore somebody's joy. Restore somebody's peace. Somebody lost their peace. Restore, 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 restore somebody's reason for even being alive. Teenagers committing suicide. Why? Because the enemy has stolen their reason for being. 